Hi, welcome back. In this video, we'll be talking about a very important algorithm called backpropagation, which helps neural networks in updating the weights and ultimately training on a specific problem. Let's get started. So in the previous video on gradient descent, we saw that for a neural network, for example, this is the neural network with a single hidden layer. We needed to find four quantities in general, basically. The first one was ever E by ever WIH. The second was ever E by BIH. The third was ever E by ever WHO. And the fourth was ever E by ever BHO. Okay. So before we start, for example, let's make some things clear. So this is the neural network that we're talking about. This is the input layer. It will receive an input called X. Okay. This is the first hidden layer. Its activation will be called H1. And the linear transformation of x when multiplied by the weights between, for example, the weights in between the input and the hidden layer is called W i h. Okay, so when x is multiplied by W1, we'll get something called a linear transformation called U1. Okay, so and the weights present between the hidden and the output that is WHO. So when H1 is multiplied by WHO, we'll get an linear transformation called U2. And we'll define the output by a variable called O. So in gradient descent, we saw that we needed to find these four quantities. So we'll be using a technique called computation graph basically to find out these values. And this is what uh, basically the systems like TensorFlow, Cafe, Theano, etc. use to automatically calculate these gradients. Okay. So we'll see first what a computation graph is. The computation graph is nothing but a series of operations which you take to reach from input to output. So every single operation is written independently so that uh, these gradients can be calculated. Let's first create a computation graph for this neural network. So let's say for example, our first operation is where we multiply x by the weight between the input and the hidden layer. So here and add a bias to it. So here we have three kind of inputs. One is the x, obviously. The second is the weight between the input and the hidden. And the third one is the bias between the input and the hidden. So when we have calculated the linear transformation, then it passes through an activation function basically. So then we calculate the hidden activation, which is nothing but passing this linear transformation through the sigma activation function. Now once when we have calculated this H1, we again calculate the second linear transformation U2, which is nothing but H1 multiplied by weight between the hidden and the output. So for this, we are receiving two inputs. One is H1, which we already have. The other one is weight between the in hidden and the input. Also, we add a bias between the hidden and the input. So let's say, for example, this is the bias that is received as an input. Next, what we do is we again calculate the hidden activation. So in this case, the hidden activation will be going to be the output. Okay, so instead of the hidden activation, we'll write it as O. So this is the final output that we'll receive. It is nothing but when U2 is passed through an activation function. And now finally, we'll calculate the error. So error is nothing but Y minus O, that is actual minus predicted square by 2. So this is how we can reach from the input that were X, WH and BIH to the error. So as you can see that this is very simple. This is something that we have already seen. We have just written it explicitly and clearly so that things may be easy. Okay. So now let's get started. So first of all, what we are interested in, for example, we are interested in finding these four quantities. What we'll start off with is the change in the error with respect to the WHO. Okay. So because since these weights are present at the last, for example, these weights and bias. So we'll first calculate the change in error when we change the weights between the hidden and the output and the bias between the hidden and output by a smaller amount. Okay. So calculating these gradients is easy with the use of computation graph. Here is how we can do it. For example, what we need to calculate is, for example, this, the change in error with respect to WHO. So this is something that we need to calculate. Okay. So ever E by ever WHO. So now in order to reach from E to WHO, we can take a series of steps since E is dependent upon O. So what we can do is we can calculate something called ever E by ever O. And since O is dependent upon U2, what we can do is we can calculate something called ever O by ever U2. And since U2 is dependent upon WHO, we can calculate something called ever O by ever U2. So this is the benefit of computation graph. When you want to calculate change in something with respect to something, we will be calculating the intermediate changes as well to reach to the point. So 
if we need to calculate change in e with respect to who we'll be calculating all the interdependencies so eva e by eva o eva o by eva u2 and eva o by eva u2 so effectively if we need to calculate change in error with respect to who it is equal to change in error with respect to the predicted value and to change in the predicted value with respect to the linear transformation second linear transformation that is between the hidden layer and the output and then this is eva u2 by eva who eva u2 by eva who and this is also called something called a chain rule and derivatives okay so in order to calculate change in error with respect to who we will be calculating and finding out these values okay so before we go ahead and find out the actual value so these let's also calculate uh, the change in error with respect to the bias between hidden and the output so the process is the same so first we'll calculate the change in error with respect to the output then the change in output with the respect to the linear transformation between the hidden and the output and then the change in the linear transformation with respect to the bias the only difference will be calculating this time the change in linear transformation with respect to bias so only this quantity will change so rest all will remain the same eva e by eva o into eva o by eva u2 into eva u2 by eva bh okay so now we know that uh, in order to calculate these two gradients we need to calculate these four values particularly eva e by eva o eva o by eva u2 eva u2 by eva who and eva u2 by eva bho okay so let's see for example how we can calculate these values when we will calculate these values then we'll see how we can proceed ahead with the other part okay okay so let's start with for example the first one which is eva e by eva o so we know that e is equal to y minus o square by 2 so when we calculate something like eva e by eva o so basically we are differentiating e with respect to o we know that a differentiation of a square is given by something like this so 2 gets cancelled by 2 so effectively eva e by eva o is nothing but difference between the actual and the predicted value so this is one thing that we have calculated that eva e by eva o is y minus o so next comes the other quantity which is eva o by eva u2 okay so here this is a sigmoid function we need to calculate the derivative of o with respect to u2 so the derivative of sigmoid function any sigmoid function is basically the sigmoid function 1 minus sigmoid function so if you need to calculate for example something like eva o by eva u2 it would be nothing but sigma u2 1 minus sigma u2 so this will be the derivative of o with respect to u so you can go ahead and try this with any sigmoid function for example a is equal to sigma x or y is equal to sigma x you will get the same result that is sigma x 1 minus sigma x okay so but we know that sigma u2 is nothing but o this is what we have written over here so we can rewrite this equation as o 1 minus o that is the predicted and 1 minus predicted so we have found out our second value now last remain is eva u2 bit eva who okay so this is what we need to find out so we know that this is actually very simple since mu2 is nothing but h1 into who plus bho okay so when we differentiate u2 with respect to who what remains is h1 so this quantity is nothing but h1 so eva u2 by eva who is h1 so we have found out our last quantity as well so we can write this thing eva e by eva wh1 by these values and this is what we already have so y we have o we have and h1 we calculate during the runtime okay for eva e by eva bho both of these things are same the only difference lies in eva u2 by eva bho so let's see it over here with the same example so here when we differentiated u2 with respect to who we got h1 as the answer because that is what was accompanying who in case of bho there is nothing but a one so when we differentiate u2 with respect to bho what we get is one so here in this case it will be one so this is the gradients of error with respect to who and bho okay so this was how we can update weights between the hidden layer and the output layer so now we have these two values we can use our update equation very similarly such as who equal to who minus eva e by eva who and simultaneously what we can do is eva bho equal to bho minus eva e by eva bho okay so we have these values we can update our weights and biases between the hidden layer and the output layer so this is just one layer getting updated okay 
so this is just the one set of weights getting updated between hidden and the output let's go ahead and see for example how we can update the weight between the input and the hidden so let me just copy this graph this computation graph onto the next window and then we'll proceed ahead okay so this time what we need to calculate is uh, the change in error with respect to the weights between the input and the hidden okay so what we need to calculate is the change in error with respect to the weights between input and hidden so the process is still the same okay so we will follow the stepwise process since e is dependent on o first we'll calculate the change in e with respect to o then we'll calculate the change in o with respect u2 then since u2 is dependent on h1 so we'll calculate the change in u2 with respect to h1 and since h1 is dependent on u1 we'll calculate change in h1 with respect to u1 and since u1 is finally dependent upon w i h so we'll calculate change in u1 with respect to w i h okay so effectively our equation becomes if we need to calculate change in error with respect to w i h it is nothing but change in error with respect to output multiplied by change in output with respect to the linear transformation of the hidden layer and the output multiplied by the change in the linear transformation by change in the hidden layer activation and multiplied by the change in hidden activation upon changing the first linear transformation and finally the change in the first linear activation on changing the weights between the input and the hidden so we know that we already calculated these two quantities have already been calculated and this is another benefit of computation graph we can reuse calculations similarly if you need to calculate the change in error with respect to bih everything remains the same except this part ever u1 by ever bih this is same ever u2 by ever h1 into ever h1 by ever u1 and ever u1 by ever bih okay so let's go ahead and calculate the quantities for these gradients okay so we already know that ever e by ever o is nothing but y minus o this we have calculated previously and ever o by ever u2 is nothing but o1 minus o this is also we have calculated previously now we need to calculate the derivative of u2 with respect to h1 so this is similar to when we calculated derivative of u2 with respect to who so in case if we are doing u2 with respect to h1 so what remains is who so this is nothing but weight between hidden and output what we need to calculate is the change in the hidden activation with respect to the linear transformation first linear transformation this is again a sigmoid function and like i told you for example uh, the derivative of sigmoid x 1 minus sigmoid x so it will remain the same it is sigmoid u1 1 minus sigmoid u1 but we know sigmoid u1 is since h1 so we can write it as h1 1 minus h1 now we need to calculate derivative of u1 with respect to wih so in this case when you differentiate u1 with respect to wih what remains is x so this gets multiplied by x again everything remains the same for when we calculate the derivative with respect to these the only thing that changes is in case of bias what we have is nothing but as one so this is the thing that we get so these are the actual values for ever e by ever wih and ever bih and this is how we can use our update equation that is wih equal to wih minus ever e by ever wih and same for bih so now we have values of ever e by ever wih so we can update our weights accordingly and reach to the minimum error value so before we wrap up let me summarize this basically so what we're doing is to calculate the gradients we first create a computation graph okay where we are using chain rule of differentiation to calculate the derivatives okay so this is how gradient descent and back propagation come together to make neural networks train on a particular problem and so this was all about back propagation in the next coming videos you will be working on creating a neural network from scratch and you will be going through and writing your own back propagation algorithm in numpy thank you